In Romans 3, verse 15 to 17, Paul writes, Their feet are swift to shed blood, ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. Here, Paul is quoting Isaiah 59, verses 7 to 8. Now, pause the video and carefully read the Isaiah passage again. You will see that it's actually talking about wicked men who shed the blood of the innocent. In other words, Isaiah 59 is telling us that innocent people do exist. Paul simply omitted the word innocent. If you are a sincere truth-seeking Christian, and you watch this video until the end, we guarantee that your perception of the Apostle Paul will never be the same again. You are about to witness shocking proof that Paul was a false teacher who cunningly manipulated the Old Testament to propagate a false doctrine. Let us begin. Paul's writings contain many theological concepts that are not supported by other parts of the Bible. One such concept introduced by Paul is that Adam's disobedience in the Garden of Eden resulted in the corruption of human nature, causing mankind to become inherently sinful and inclined towards wickedness. While many places in the Bible speak of sin and sinful people in a general sense, only Paul teaches that man's sinful nature is a direct result of Adam's actions. He does so rather explicitly in Romans 5. Additionally, Paul teaches in many places that humans are naturally inclined towards sin. But for the purpose of this video, we will focus on a specific section from Paul's writings. Romans 3, verses 9 to 18. Paul begins by declaring that all humans are under the power of sin. For we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. He then proceeds to string together several snippets from the Old Testament and says the following, As it is written, There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, there is no one who seeks God. All have turned away, they have together become worthless, there is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit, the poison of vipers is on their lips, their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know, there is no fear of God before their eyes. Paul tries to create the impression that what he's teaching is grounded in the preceding portions of the Bible. However, when we examine this passage in light of the Old Testament, it becomes evident that Paul has actually taken Old Testament verses out of their original context and rearranged them to create a narrative of his own. Let us look at this matter in detail. In Romans 3, verses 10 to 12, Paul writes, As it is written, There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Here, Paul is quoting Psalm 14, verses 1 to 3 and Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20. But only two verses later, Psalm 14 goes on to say that righteous people do exist. Ecclesiastes 7 also mentions the existence of righteous people. In Romans 3, verse 13a, Paul writes, Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit. Here, Paul is quoting Psalm 5, verse 9. But, only two verses later, Psalm 5 speaks of righteous people. In Romans 3, verse 13b, Paul writes, The poison of vipers is on their lips. Here, Paul is quoting Psalm 140, verse 3. But ten verses later, Psalm 140 goes on to mention righteous and upright people. In Romans 3, verse 14, Paul writes, Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Here, Paul is quoting Psalm 10, verse 7. Amazingly, in the very next verse, Psalm 10 tells us that innocent people exist. In Romans 3, verse 15 to 17, Paul writes, Their feet are swift to shed blood, ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. Here, Paul is quoting Isaiah 59, verses 7 to 8. Now, pause the video and carefully read the Isaiah passage again. You will see that it's actually talking about wicked men who shed the blood of the innocent. In other words, Isaiah 59 is telling us that innocent people do exist. Paul simply omitted the word innocent. In Romans 3, verse 18, Paul writes, There is no fear of God before their eyes. Here, Paul is quoting Psalm 36, verse 1. And as you may have expected, only a few verses later, Psalm 36 goes on to mention righteous and upright people. Thus, every Old Testament chapter that Paul selectively quotes in Romans 3, to prove man is inherently sinful, tell us that righteous and innocent men do exist. Paul's teachings are refuted by the very Old Testament chapters he quotes from. His arguments fall apart when we take into consideration the complete picture presented in the Old Testament. Based on everything we have observed up to this point, there are only two possible conclusions. Either Paul was incredibly ignorant of Old Testament scripture, or he deliberately distorted the Old Testament to create a false narrative. Paul's false teaching that all men are under the power of sin, 
can be easily refuted by the simple fact that the Bible repeatedly affirms the existence of righteous, blameless and upright people. For example, in Genesis 6, Noah is called righteous and blameless. In Genesis 15, Abraham is associated with righteousness. In Job 1, Job is described as being blameless, upright and as one who feared God and shunned evil. In Luke 1, Zechariah and Elizabeth are called righteous. In Matthew 23, Jesus called Abel righteous and acknowledges that righteous people existed. In Mark 2, Jesus again acknowledges the righteous and distinguishes them from sinners. In Ezekiel 18, a man who obeys God is called righteous. In Psalm 119, those who keep the law of God are called blameless. In Deuteronomy 6, we read that those who keep the law will be regarded as righteous. There are many more examples, but it would be a waste of time to list them all here. But what we have shown here is enough to prove that the Pauline idea of all men being in sin, contradicts the other parts of the Bible. In conclusion, the Christian notion that all humans are inherently sinful largely originates from a man who cited the Old Testament out of context to craft his own narrative. Christians need to wake up and realize they have been misled by Paul. His false teachings have clouded their understanding and is preventing them from perceiving the true reality of things. Considering all the evidence shown in this video, it would be unwise for Christians to persist in following Paul, let alone to get their beliefs from his writings. It is our sincere desire that Christians ponder over the facts presented in this video and reconsider their stance on Paul. The simple fact of the matter is that Paul was never an apostle. In fact, he was not even qualified to be an apostle, and for this reason, he could not have joined the original apostles. We have proven all this using the very words of Jesus himself in this video. If you are curious and sincere in your search for truth, we urge you to watch it. We guarantee you will never look at Paul the same way again.